I don't know why looking at this in my camera is making me hungry for candy. Today is gonna be a stream for the Bauer Light. Um, it is a sponsored stream. Well, technically it's not actually a sponsored stream, but Omnitype is one of our sponsors. Uh, so this is kind of like, I guess it is a sponsored stream. I don't know what to classify this is uh, as a, but uh, it's sponsored by Omnitype. So although you guys know me, I'm not gonna be biased towards that or anything. I actually did a whole write up on the uh, Bauer Light already. There wasn't really, much that I was looking through it, I'm like, there wasn't really a whole lot of anything that needed to be improved on this other than it just finally being launched, which I think we're getting now, guys. Omnitype did send me some sea glass Duroc switches, which I'm not gonna lie, I do kind of want to use, but I did some testing and I don't know if they're up my alley. Maybe in a different board or maybe we do a second Bauer light uh, maybe we'll do it on the weekend, but they are pretty. I do have one complaint though, one complaint. The ratio of colors seems to be a little bit off here, but I kind of like that because it's kind of like an RNG kind of thing, right? So the RNG person inside me likes that, but uh, the ratio, I got three greens in this one. Uh, but yeah, these are, these are really cute. These are really pretty. So I'm, I'm gonna use these soon. I haven't actually, I lubed a few of them up and then I test it some they are a bit deeper so this is one of the ones i tested they're a bit deeper sounding they're a long pole switch that doesn't really sound like a long pole so it's interesting um well we, we will do a bower light with this but for now i was looking at the switches we did use because i did build two bower lights prior to this let me get them for you guys we got one bower light and then we have another Bauer light. So I put haze switches with a cherry space bar on this guy too. And these are tactile switches of some sort. They're gator on tactile switches of some sort. I just don't remember. So we have this guy and we have this guy. The haze switches sound significantly different than the obscuras. Were these root beers? I can't remember. But we can also use this to kind of compare and see like some minor differences, if any. I think there's only a few that I can name off the top of my head um, compared to the new production ones. But this is the Atomic colorway, at least the prototype sample version of it. I thought this one here sounded fantastic, but I am more curious about the Obscuras. Now, I'm gonna let you guys pick what color we actually do today. I'm not gonna pick it. We have literally every, oh God, this is heavy. We have literally every color. So you guys could pick whichever one you guys want for me to build today. Oh, I need a, oh, this is not good. I don't got light. There's Grim, Seafoam, Ghost, Atomic, Rouge, and then First Edition. The First Edition is the white opaque one. So I think that's the only one of all of these that is uh, opaque. I think everything else is translucent. Adam mod when? <laughs> when reformed Adam happens, maybe. Didn't Teha do seafoam? Do you guys wanna see another seafoam? And then we also have some different tops that we can play around with too. I think what we do is we build this and then maybe we pick a different top to kind of like mix and match. Ooh, looks like red. I'm kind of down to do rouge. Rouge with Crimson Cadet. I think I would kind of want to do rouge with uh, red line, but I have to take it off my Kohaku. But I mean, like we have some choices for keycaps too that we can pick. I think rouge with red line would look sick. Uh, can you show first edition? First edition is just white. So it's gonna be, I think the only opaque one. I think it's also a little bit more expensive than the other ones as well. Man, Garrett really kills it with packaging all the time too. Uh, pretty nice. Pretty cool. Uh, it, it is it pronounced the way you're saying it, or is it just? It's not rogue. It's not pronounced rogue. It's rouge. This is very very red. <laughs> Usually my camera sucks at picking up red, but this is very very red. Let's take a look at the Rouge one. Beginner friendly, high-end experience, fully programmable, made in the USA. Very, very cool. 
Kit includes keyboard enclosure, switch plate, PCB, breakout PCB, plate foam, screw fasteners and hardware, blah, 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 and a mounting, uh, sorry, not a mounting, uh, build guide. So let's open this. Although I don't wanna ruin the packaging while I open this, so. How, I, where's my tweezers? Sometimes what I like to do is I like to kind of like swindle the, the tweezers underneath. Oh shit, where'd I put those things? All right, you know what? We're just gonna, we're just gonna, oh, we got it, we got it, we got it. We got it. Yeah, they're gonna be available on Friday, guys. If you guys want more info about the entire board, um, yeah, Oak just linked it or I have a build command. Uh, if you guys wanna help support the channel, there's an affiliate link on that too. But I mean, the board's gonna be available, I think starting at 120 for most of the colors, I believe. Let's see if I'm right. Let's, uh, before I click anything, I believe the white one was 174.99. I'm pretty positive. I was right. And there's only 250 units of that. Oh, and that actually includes GMK keycaps. That's probably why it's a little bit more expensive too. I totally forgot about that one little detail. So the white one does include the keycaps in the box as well. All right, well, my camera doesn't like this, but you can see even the box has the Bauer lip on this. I think we saw that about the uh, prototype sample units we saw originally as well. Kind of makes opening the box a little easier too. Ooh, the red is nice. Ooh. So this is one of the only small differences that I can like quickly tell is it now says Omnitype on the back, which I kind of like to be honest only because it blends in so well with the translucent case that you don't, it's not gonna be like in your face about it. Pretty nice. The plastic looks pretty nice quality too. I know that some of the sample units I had had a lot of like streaks and blemishes on some of them. So this looks like insanely more polished than the ones that we saw originally. Did someone say this looks like a Jolly Rancher? Kind of does look like a Jolly Rancher. I don't know why looking at this in my camera is making me hungry for candy. I, I don't know why it is. So we have plates. Wow. All out on packaging. This is probably one of the nicer, oh my God, my camera does not like these solid colors. All out on these packaging. Okay. Does it taste like cherry? Do you guys like cherry candies? I know some people say cherry candies to them taste like um, medicine. I like cherry candies. The build guide. We have some of the little gaskets over there. Some of our standoff screws. I don't know if we'll use those today. And then we have some more gaskets. We have our PCB. Little Bauer light action going on. Very cool. And here is the manual that Mr. Omnitype worked very, very hard on. I have said this in the past, but when you include manuals of your keyboard, it shows that you, you do care about the person who's maybe building it for the first time. And I've always appreciate it when people include manuals. Always, always, Mr. Omnitep was his father. Always appreciate these kind of things. Again, my camera, just so everyone's aware, I'm using a Fuji film sim. So the reds don't appear like true red, but I can tell you that these, even though the, the keyboard does seem like it's rendering pretty okay on this camera, this is like very red. So this is like a very, like a cherry red. I know it might appear a bit purple on the screen today, but it's just the Fuji film sim that we use. Alrighty. Put everything to the side here. We have our plate. Take this guy out too. Yeah, it's, it's probably not the most accurate thing in the world, but I mean, I like the way the colors are produced out of it, so. And then the cool thing about this too, is if you guys were interested in this one little thing over here is if you did wanna go full backspace, all you have to do is just cut this part off just like knock it out and you can do full backspace on your bower. 
So it does support both if you want it to, and then if you want the, the plate to, you know, just have the split, you can keep it like this too. But if we, I mean, you can still insert the switches like this when, if you want to go back to split, but if you didn't, it gives you the plate support over there. Unfortunately, you can't reverse it though, guys. <laughs> Unfortunately. Uh, GMK Dracula with the Ur mods would look sick with Rouge. I don't think, I have Dracula, but I don't think I have those particular mods. Does the PCB support full backspace? It should, right? Yeah, I don't think my prototype units did, but the new ones should. I remember that being one small point of discussion during the, uh, the original ones. Because I think there were just like early copies of it where it didn't support it. At least I think it didn't, I can't remember now. But it does look like there is a split backspace option on the PCB. Why no step caps? And yeah, there is a one little thing that I wish this did have, but it's not like a complete deal breaker to me. I'm assuming the reason is just a personal reason there, but that's probably the only minor criticism that I have. Just because I prefer the visual aesthetics of that. If you guys are asking why I'm doing that, it's like, Every Wilba PCB is smiling at you a little bit. As you can see, it's slightly curved. So I have to, I don't know why they're always like this, but they're always like this. Don't be afraid to kind of just bend it back into place a little bit. It'll eventually do it all straight again. I, I don't know. It's okay. All right, I'm not gonna put the foam in this, even though it does come with foam. I just don't feel like Ooh, that's kind of nice looking with the smoky plate. Ooh, made in the USA. Nice. Sorry, I'm kind of getting like distracted. I want to know what this means. What does ABCD combo mean? <laughs> I don't know, man. I just want to know what it means now. What's it a combo of? Is it a secret cheat code? Uh, it's the, what layouts the board cover for our back end parts number. Oh, okay, okay, okay. I thought it was just some sort of plastic code. I was like, I want to know now. It says made in the USA too. I don't know if you guys can see that nicely. Very nice. Should I do the standoffs? Do I care about the standoffs? I usually don't, to be honest. But if you guys did want to put standoffs on, standoffs essentially, a, they build up kind of like you would do with the um, acrylic builds. You just put a screw on the bottom and then rotate. I don't know if I'm gonna do, I would put standoffs. I don't know if I need standoffs though. However, maybe I do because this, this is a Wilba PCB and there's a bit of a curve. So maybe we do put them on. I got one more standoff, but I don't see where it goes. Pretty positive that's an extra. Let me check the, hey, let me check the build guide. One moment. I put in the stabs. There's one, two, three, four, five. Okay, there is five. Never mind. This is one extra one. Look at that. Good old build guide. Beautiful, actually, I'm gonna keep that open. There are extras of everything? Okay, okay, that's good to know. That's very, very good to know. The plate screws into the PCB? Yeah, so what those are, oh, is that where you were asking about champagne? Sorry, I was so confused by what you meant by that. These are plate standoffs. So this is to, this is mainly for the benefit of hot swap units. It's so when you take out all the switches, if, and I don't recommend doing this, by the way, do not, do not do this. Do not put your plate in and then start popping in switches this way. There's a gap underneath here, right? And you run the risk of popping a, a, a socket. When you're ready to do so, I know it's a few extra minutes of work, take it out, regardless if there's standoffs or not, and just seat it down on your desk pad or use your fingers and support each socket as you go. Please don't run the risk of damaging your stuff. Pretty please. This happens a lot. I had to even make a PSA for novel keys a little while ago because people were damaging their stuff. They're, they're like their NK65s and you know, it's basically kind of like that same kind of bracket of product as this particular product. And people were damaging them a lot by just popping sockets. So just as a little FYI, if you're gonna take anything out of this entire video, please, for any keyboard you have, do not do that. You're gonna break it and then you're gonna feel bad and then it's gonna cost you money to fix. 
and it's just not good. It is just not good. What's in this particular box again? Come here. These go in the top, right? These go in here? Oh wait, these have like little specific ways that you put them in. You know what, I'm gonna do this later. I don't wanna get ahead of myself. And then uh, let's do our switches next. Let's follow our guide. What does our guide say? Switches next. Wow, I was right. I wanted to use cherry switches and then I saw Teha use cherry switches. And I was like, well, I wanna give everyone something different, but they would have looked so, so sweet on this. All right, now that we're done putting in our switches, let's see what's our next step. Uh, we're gonna put our donut bumpers on the top housing. I know I've already done this guys, but I'm just gonna go through it all again. So in case you guys are wondering about this, there is this little tab, I wanna call it. Let me better show this to you guys. There's a little small tab. I don't know if you guys can actually see it too well on this. It's on the top right there, small little tab. They align with this small little tab on the plastic, so they just pop in. They just set right into place. Uh, why did this board take so long to produce? I think that's more of a question for Omnitype, but I can answer some of it, I guess, uh, from my perspective, which is I'm fine with how long this took to produce. Um, obviously, Omnitype is a vendor as well, so I'm sure he had other responsibilities in the meantime too, but uh, I would rather have a very solid product come out than a half-assed one, even if it means taking an extra year or two. And I appreciate that he didn't collect any money for group buys or pre-orders or anything like that. I liked the sample version I got of this a while back and so far I am liking this version. So like I said, big fan. What's next on the list here? Let's put some gaskets on. Another thing I'm gonna comment about this too, and I know I commented about this on the prototype unit, I really appreciate that uh, Omnitype decided to go the route of putting in these little bumpers on the top. Because you know what? I know one of the big complaints about the Bauer uh, was people didn't like the visible gaskets on the top. So I do appreciate him actually just kind of minimizing that. So you don't actually have to see that stuff. If, I mean, for me, I actually kind of liked it, so. Is there an opaque bower? Yes, there's gonna be the limited edition one. And then I have some of the old sample units that are opaque. Here, I'll show you guys in like one second. So this, I don't think this is gonna be available in this color. It's, it's not, right, Garrett? But this is like an opaque one, for example, with the translucent bottom. There's a limited one of 250. Yes, and it comes with GMK keycaps as well. So that's a pretty cool unit. Okay, let us grab the rest of the stuff that we need. What's next on our little list here? We need the daughter board as well as two screws. So you only need two screws for that because it kind of just sits in there like this. Pretty nice, good alignment on that. Very, very awesome. You got some uh, extra little, you know, the rouge, the code there for the Bauer light on this guy. And then it says where it's designed. Huntsville, Alabama. I don't know if you guys can really see that well. There you guys go. The texture of the board is quite nice too. It has this kind of like little frosted rippling to it, which is very pretty. So it does have a very nice texture to it. All right. Let's put our little thingy-bobs on over here. All right, now you just clip it in there because there's two little clips, so you just make sure you push it down. Two little clips there. All right, and now let's screw it all in. I'm guessing these are the rest of the screws here. I'm hoping I used the right screws for the daughter board. The Arc 60, yeah, the Arc 60 is nice. Um, there's the Gios Revival too, if you want to look at something brand new that just came out. There is definitely that. Here, I'm actually gonna use this. It's the right bit. 
Are these the right screws? Am I using the right screws for this? I think I am. Let me let me check. Let me double check the guide. Put the blockers on. Oh, it actually does say to install it from the top, anyways. So we did that right. All right. And then the four screws. Yeah, we are using the right screws. All right. What's next up on my list? There, we we'll get the feet. All right, we we'll get the feet next. Uh, I'd recommend over the Arias for the price point. I haven't actually tried the the Hexus. There's a whole bunch, like I kind of stopped my, my audio journey a little while ago. So there are a bunch of boards that I unfortunately just haven't taken a look at yet. This needs Jim K boob. I was thinking Redline. Does Redline not sound good? I mean, Redline is perfect on Rouge. I'm down to do Redline, guys. I haven't really used Redline all that much because I put it on my Kohaku and then I just kind of left it there. I wish I actually had better ways to keep the original boxes for these things, but... Here's the board, though. Let's take a look at the side profile. So there's the side profile on this. We have now the Omni-type logo. So just so you guys can see the difference between the very first one. Oh, one second. So this was the purple atomic one that was part of the initial batch that I did, the sample batch. So there was no logo on this guy. Um, you can even see there's a lot of like, actually you might not be able to tell, but the original batch had a lot of like scratches and stuff. Uh, it's probably because it was a sample, right? And that was a little bit of a hesitant hesitation of mine too. I'm like, ooh, this is like not super clean looking. Flawless on this new one. Uh, and that's pretty much it. There's not huge, huge, huge changes. There was this little lip on the front, which did have that little, um, I guess the injection molded bit on the front over here, but that's no longer present on the new one too, which is nice. So again, a lot of, a lot of cleaning up of the keyboard, which is good looking. We like that. Usually with these injection molded keyboards, you see a lot of those like injection molding marks everywhere. Ooh, that is nice looking though. Ooh, this, uh, this sounds like it's gonna punch above its price point for sure. So we have Obscura keycaps or Obscura switches in here with uh, the stock plate that comes with it. Um, GMK keycaps, it's really all there is to this build. We're using cherry clip-ins for this. And I did only apply a little bit of lube of 205 on the switches. So there's no RGB on this. Let's see what this is gonna sound like. Let's actually open up my notepad here. To me, this punch is way above its price point. Way above. Now I'm gonna switch this for a Nixie because I remember, for whatever reason, I really liked the Nixie as the space bar. Yeah. For whatever reason, the Nixie pairs so well with this. Listen to this. Like. It's weird because this isn't the long pull switch, right? This is everything I like in sound profile, by the way. Um, so this is what the haze switch is, if you remember. There shouldn't be any difference in internal structure here, so this should be a good, accurate representation. The haze switches are much deeper. I like the Obscuras a lot more in this. I had a good, like, when I was deciding on switches, 
I was like, oh, the haze ones we did were great. They're really deep. But I was like, I really want something to be a little bit more punchy with this build to see if it can kind of sound like some of its aluminum counterparts uh, of having that nice like punchy alpha. And I think we hit the nail on the head here. Yeah, this, this Nixie has a spring swap to it. It has a 56 gram spring in it. Um, are you trying to say that this keyboard you made is your love letter to the community, Alex? Every keyboard I do. <laughs> this, uh, this pops in every way, love this build. Yeah, I'm very happy with this. Well, the nice thing about Obscures is they have a little bit of that scratchiness, right? Like you can kind of hear it. It's not super present like the, the Nixies are. Although I need to tune this right side of the stab better. It's not, I don't love the right side. The left side sounds fine though. It is lubed, yes. So, this is gonna be, this is an easy recommend. This is like super easy recommend for me. Again, not that Omnitypes is a sponsor or anything, but for 120 bucks, if you get the right switches to pair with this, um, you know, I didn't, and I didn't necessarily love the Bauer with the tactiles in it, because I'm not a tactile guy, mind you, so this is a personal bias. I didn't love the tactiles in it myself. I like the hay switches, but I really like the Obscuras. And this, to, for it to sound like this at 120 bucks, um, you know, it's, uh, it, I think this is part, like, this is great. Again, the only, the only thing that I would say might be an objective disappointment to some, and I hope it ends up not swaying your decision if you did want the board to not pick it up, it might be the step caps, but otherwise it's a very small minor grievance for me, just because I personally just like the way it looks. Uh, I don't know, this board looks, sounds phenomenal. It would be really easy for me now just to pick this up, put it into a different color and play around with what color I want if I didn't want to rebuild this. Actually, you know what would be really cool for this board? Maybe a future rendition. You know that QK75, how it used that magnetic daughter board, the magnetic um, connector? Uh, there's an actual name for it, I just, it's escaping me right now. That would have been super clean for this. The QK75 doesn't actually have any cables. It just lays in place and it creates contact, like magnetizes itself and it works just like that. That would have been super neat. Um, no, 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 Avo. It has a different, like a daughter board to um, PCB. It's not the actual case I'm talking about. It's the uh, connection type. I don't remember what the actual term is. Mag connector or something like that, yeah. I don't know, I think this is a pretty good deal, guys. 120, looks great. One pound and 5.8 ounces. This looks really good. This looks super, super good. I am very happy with this. Peace out, everyone. Love you and bye-bye.